Today we're gonna to be covering the Neo ET7. This is Tech Path. In case you have not joined us before, this show covers all things AI, EV, cryptocurrency, and a lot of technology in the space. So let's talk about Neo. Um, Neo is an interesting car maker. If you understand what they're doing, and if you've invested maybe over in Neo stock, they're a company that's very, very uh, forward looking. And they definitely have a leadership style about them that is different than a lot of other EV manufacturers, uh, which is what one of the reasons I like Neo. The, there are some things, though, I think that as we run through this vehicle, that I, I want to kind of mention about Neo and kind of where their potential future is in the Chinese market. But the ET7 is the upcoming, upcoming flagship sedan from Neo, of course, and it's made its first appearance at this show. Um, I like the interior. The interior is uh, a pretty amazing look. The design cues, the styling, the seating, the dash design itself, all of it has just a very futuristic look, which has been one of the things that Neo has been very strong on in terms of design styling cues and their strategy on bringing what is kind of a new era of EV design, especially when you look at, and I hate to say it, but Tesla is a little bit dated right now with where uh, EV design is going, especially on the interior. And I feel like Tesla needs to really kind of get up their game. With what I'm seeing coming out of Shanghai, there is a lot of a definite, uh, very cool innovations that I think we as owners of vehicles are gonna start to see across the EV marketplace uh, worldwide. The ET, uh, ET7 exterior color captures the most beautiful skies and comes in cloud white, deep black, star gray, and southern star. Moreover, Three of these exterior paints are added to the palette, which is a sunrise beige, a luminous orange, and the Neo color of 2021, which is Arctic green. This one is the one I would order if I was putting a Neo in my garage. It's currently preparing the production for the ET7, which probably means that they're going to start within a few months. Uh, they're going to test their prototypes before they go to market launch, which is the final version slated, we'll see, slated for Q1 uh, 2022. So let's talk about their batteries. The 50 kilowatt battery pack is gonna get you 500 kilometers, 311 miles of range of any DC range, which is quite a bit different than EPA or some of what we have seen in some of the range measurements. Uh, the 100 kilowatt is gonna get you to 700 kilometers, 435 miles of range, also any DC. Uh, the 150 is gonna give you supposedly uh, 620 miles of range of any DC, any DC range. That's the point I would start to say, I think we're just measuring batteries here. This is something that I just don't know if a company like Neo is gonna be able to drop this in and do it. Now, let's talk about performance, zero to 100 kilometers, 62 miles per hour, 3.9 seconds. This is definitely Tesla Model 3 uh, and definitely goes head to head, I think, with the Model Y uh, in this. I'd love to see the price tag for this one. Uh, no prices have been released, of course. The system output uh, 400 K, uh, 480 kilowatts and 850 nms of torque. This is where we're talking about power. And I think this, of course, is the electric vehicle craze. Everybody is going to have this kind of torque. Um, it's no longer going to be the only the Teslas out there at the stoplights that are out there hammering it down. I think we're going to start to see, a, well, as you guys know, we're going to start to see a ton of these vehicles as they start to move into the space, especially here in the U.S., Let's talk about Neo's second generation powertrain with the SIC Power Electric, uh, Electronics. Essentially, this, I think, is one of, when you look at what they're trying to do, they are trying to one-up or keep trying to one-up themselves in terms of these powertrains. And I think this is a good thing because Neo is still small enough that they can kind of do that. But at some point, they're going to have to lock and, lo lock and load on one of these powertrains, much like what the American makers did for many years. They get a certain powertrain. Once it's working really well, you lock it in and that's the powertrain you're going to use. And I think with electronics playing into this, it definitely starts to move uh, the eight ball because, you know, there's so many more options that can, you know, flow into it as far as feature sets. That's a lot of it. So big deal. Because uh, that's going to be a continuously ev evolution of design and tech that continuously improves on this, which is the beautiful thing about the new age automotive industry is that these over there updates, things like that are really gonna kind of play into this. I guess the questions I have for Neo is, are we gonna see, um, nobody's talking about, and this is the thing that I really kind of don't understand. Nobody's talking about autonomous, full self-driving, autopilot systems, all these kind of things. I feel like it's just either one, 
they've got something in their bag that they're going to really re reveal on, or two, they are so far behind where the state of the art industry is in terms of full self-driving and potentially autonomous vehicles. With all that being said, let's try to stop the vehicle. This one goes from basically uh, 100 kilometers, 62 miles an hour, uh, braking in 33.5 meters, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, it is the Brembo brake system, which is standard in theirs, and also the drag coefficient on this car is a 0.23. A little bit blocky, because uh, we've seen drag coefficients coming in at 0 0.20, 0 0.21, uh, which has been very efficient, including like we just did a deal on the Mercedes-Benz, the EQS. I was surprised that one came in so sleek, but it did. And that's where I think the elements, because as you guys all know, uh, drag coefficient is a huge scenario on being able to extend your range Weight is a factor. Design really plays into all elements, and I feel like that's where Tesla has been able to really kind of push the envelope in terms of their design styling cues and maintain the most uh, efficient vehicles out there in terms of range. So we're going to continue our coverage on the Shanghai Auto Show, and a lot of the drops that we're going to be doing, we'll continue to see these as they're hitting the streets. Uh, for the first time, you guys are getting a first look here on TechPath, and of course, if you're listening over on the podcast right now would be a good time for you to go over the YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Just search Paul Barron Network, and that will bring all the TechPath shows, along with many of our other shows, up to you. Subscribe, like these videos, and of course, if you have an idea for a show, send us a note to producer at revernetworks.com, or you can always hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time here on TechPath.